let's think about the vortex vector field that's uh, minus y over r squared times i plus x over r squared times j. That's what I've entered into this uh, vector field analyzer. And we have discovered that when you take a circle of radius a centered at the origin, you get exactly 2 pi for that integral, regardless of the radius of the circle. We did that calculation because of the symmetry by hand, and then, but then we discovered that if even if the circle isn't centered at the origin, we still get exactly 2 pi, unless the circle's out here, in which case we get 0. Now, if the circle does not enclose the origin, we, can, we understand how to use Green's theorem to prove this. What, there's this fairly straightforward calculation that says the scalar curl, dq dx minus dp dy, of this vector field is 0 everywhere but at the origin where nothing about the vector field makes sense. And therefore, it, if I look at the circulation around this curve, by Green's theorem, that's the integral of the scalar curl over the whole in interior, and if that's the zero function, then you get zero. But let's see how we could use Green's theorem to understand this idea that this integral doesn't depend on the radius, and in fact, it doesn't even depend on any detail about this curve, and it doesn't even have to be a circle. I could do a polygon as long as it's closed up, then we're getting exactly the same answer, as long as we go once around the circle. And we even discovered if you go twice around, you get a very similar number. You get 4 pi. Okay, so how could we do that? Well, let's go back to um, just a uh, simple polygon that goes once around. Well, we cannot use Green's theorem and with the region being this entire region inside, this, uh, inside the polygon. Because Green's theorem says the vector field has to be defined and nice, basically the derivatives have to be continuous, everywhere inside the interior of the region, not just on the curve that we were originally interested in. And that's definitely not true for this vector field here. And in, uh, intuitively, morally, there's basically an infinite kernel of circulation there uh, going on at the, at the origin, and that's what's causing the problem. Well, what if we can just avoid that? And what if we can leverage that one symmetrical calculation we did? Remember, we did the symmetrical calculation where we have a circle of radius A, let's say circle of radius 1, right in here. Let's just take the unit circle. And what if we look at the region between our curve and the unit circle? Now, it's a little hard to draw both of those on this at the same time. I think the vector field analyzer won't let us do that. But just imagine the unit circle here and then I've got this region out, uh, this curve out here. Let's say they're both going counterclockwise. What would happen if I looked at the region in between those? Okay, so let me just go ahead and write it down. Let's say that uh, C1 is that random, oops, random polygon closed polygonal curve, let's say, to make it really explicit, and it goes counterclockwise. And let's say C2 is the unit circle inside that polygon. And let's say it's also going counterclockwise. Okay, then what about the region in between? Let's say R equals the region in between then the question is, what is the boundary of R? Well, it's got those two pieces. Again, I didn't, uh, this thing doesn't let me draw it real easily. But I've got a polygonal curve out here. It even deleted that thing. And then I've got everything between that and the unit circle. Let's, let's say that's inside. Okay, well, that's, so that's going to be C1 going counterclockwise, because an outer boundary is supposed to be going counterclockwise, but the internal boundary goes the other way. And this is really where that's really super, super important um, to use that. Okay, so that means that Green's theorem, well, Green's theorem does apply to the region R. It says that the double integral over R of the scalar curl, um, yeah, the scalar curl of my vortex vector field. Let me put in a little extra space there. Okay. dA 
So that's this that's a scalar function, the scalar curl of that guy. Um, and I integrate that. That's equal to the integral on the boundary of R of V dot ds dot dr. V where is it? Dot dr. Okay. So let me just bold these guys to make it look like this is really a vector field, and that's really a vector line integral. Okay. So what's that going to be? That's going to be the integral over those two pieces the outer and the inner, and they're going to be with opposite sign. Okay, so that's one piece minus the other. And guess what this is? Hmm, this is the integral of the zero function over here. Let's see if I can go further, yeah. Okay, so that integral was just equal to zero, because remember, r is everything between those two curves. It doesn't include the origin. The gradient theorem totally works, and the scalar curl is everywhere zero there, because that's what's special about v. Even though it looks like it's turning, we figured out it's not really actually locally turning anywhere. And so that means that these two guys are equal. So we just you know, bring one, one side over, and we've got that that equals that. And so that says that any of these line integrals, no matter what the curve is, is are going to be equal. Now what, what do we use about it? It's that if we put them together as the boundary of one region, that region doesn't include the origin. That's going to work when they both go around the origin just once. Okay. Now it's a little more interesting to think about. I'll let you think about what happens if I've got that curve that goes twice around. Is it true that I could just like cordon off the origin with the unit circle again, or some circle of some, some small radius, and say that the boundary of what's in between is exactly just this green curve and the unit circle. And if you stare at it for a, a minute, you'll probably discover, no, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't look like the boundary of some nice region. You have to take it apart into two pieces is what happens when you do that. And if you do it carefully, you can discover that, yes, when you go around twice like this, then you actually should get twice as big an answer. You should get 4 pi, which is exactly what we're seeing here. So, um, that's cool, but let's, let me show you something even cooler, I think. What I'm going to do, oops, is I'm just going to, uh, well actually, I mean, let me change, not change the Y. I'm going to slide this guy over one unit. Okay, so everywhere I see an X, I'm going to replace it by an X minus 1, in parentheses. Okay. Okay, that doesn't do that much, it just slides it over. But now I'm going to uh, combine that with a version where I'm going to slide it over the other way. Okay, and then this guy plus x plus 1 over x plus 1 squared plus y squared. Now let's see if that gives me what I want. Okay, so now it's got two vortices. And let's test the circulation here. Let me just do circles, it's easier. Okay. Hmm. Zero, 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 zero. So when I do little circles, I'm really doing uh, scalar curl calculations. I'm really doing local circulation calculations. And unless I enclose, enclose those two special points, I keep getting zero. Well, that makes sense, because each individual piece is just a, a shifted copy of the vortex vector field, and we know that has scalar curl zero. That doesn't change with the shifting. But now, if I include, enclose one of the vortices, I get 2 pi. But what happens, and if I enclose this guy, I get 2 pi. What happens if I enclose both? Well, why don't you guess? Think about your guess for a sec. And we get 4 pi. So now, we're enclosing sort of two point sources of circulation, um, infinitely concentrated vortices and we're getting twice the answer we got before. Uh, a real cool thing would be, what if you did, like, let's double this guy, and let's maybe change the sign of the other guy. Okay, so now this one is still spinning counterclockwise, but twice as strong, so it gets 4 pi when you go around it. This guy's count spinning the other way, notice the different color, it gets only 2 pi, but in a negative when we go counterclockwise around it. What do you think is going to happen when I go all around both of them? It cancels out partially to get just 2 pi. Um, so that's kind of cool. 
and we will uh, we will talk about how you could prove that with exactly the same kind of arguments, sort of putting together, cutting and pasting pieces uh, in a particular region that has the right boundary to figure out um, exactly why this why this should give us uh, the results we do, and it leads to some very 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 cool, basically topological insights that are uh, really great stuff.